How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood and welcome to the beginning of the Game Maker Studio 2 uh, tutorial series. So basically what we're going to be doing is taking all the aspects of creating a game, um, programming, creating sprites, creating animations, creating sound effects, creating background music, everything that's involved, you know, that's around being an indie dev, we're going to do that in bite-sized pieces. A little bit here, a little bit there, and we're going to build and make a bunch of crappy projects. That's Honestly, we're going to make a bunch of crappy projects and hopefully learn how to make a decent project by, you know, a dozen or so crappy projects. So we're going to learn a little bit here and a little bit there, but how do you get started? Well, I would recommend Game Maker Studio 2. Um, you can get in the beta for free. So there's some limitations to it, but um, it's not even out yet, and it's super stable, though. I've never crashed with it. It's uh, I've used Game Maker for a while, and it's kind of dated, and I wouldn't recommend really using it right now. Uh, but a lot of you are coming from RPG Maker, so I'm going to try to relate things to RPG Maker if I can see a similarity, in it, and uh, maybe I'll use RPG Maker terms to describe some of the things in Game Maker, Game Maker Studio 2. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below where you can go to this page. And basically, you're going to go ahead and join the beta for free. Now, if you like it and uh, you want to you find out that you know you find out this is something you really want to do and uh, make some full giant projects so you can get the desktop version I recommend um, and if you already have paid for Game Maker 1 you can get that professional version for 60 bucks so um, I would go that route that's what I did uh, but join the beta for free you know just to see if it's something that you want to do um, you'll log in you'll create an account so it's free and then um, download it and the only limitations are you can only have 15 objects, 20 sprites, 5 rooms, 10 sounds, 2 tile sets, 10 script. You know, there's some, some limitation. <clears throat> However, uh, we're going to make a bunch of crappy games. And this is plenty of resources for a crappy game. You can make several crappy games and even fun games, right? I'm saying crappy just, you know, so you don't get your expe expectations too high. Uh, on your first project, you're not going to make some great game, but you're going to learn, right? So get the free version. I'll put a link in the description. I think that's enough time for that. So once you've got that going, um, you want to load it up, and it'll bring up some opening scene. Uh, it'll give you like a, a little hint or something, like a tip thing. Just close that, and then click on File and go to New. And when you create a new project, it's going to ask you if you want to do drag and drop mode or if you want to use Game Maker language mode. Now, the drag and drop mode has been improved a lot since uh, Game Maker version 1. However, I recommend jumping straight into GML because it's an easy, easy programming language to learn. And um, I think you can just get a lot more out of it if you jump into Game Maker language. So you have to decide if you want to do drag and drop or game, uh, GML. Just click on GML. Uh, give it a name. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to overwrite the existing file that I've got right here. Yep, and just create a new project. Uh, we don't want to save anything to the other project. We're going to create a new project. So when you get to your new project, you're going to see you have your workspace open right here. And the workspace in Game Maker Studio 2 is quite awesome. Uh, you can do a whole lot with it, and the middle mouse button is going to be your friend. You'll see why a little bit later. So on the right-hand side, you've got the room editor, but we're going to click on Resources. Open up that pane. And you'll notice that we can expand some tabs, but most of them are just placeholders for right now. Um, the only thing that's created for you is the room, which is what we're going to be uh, using the most, basically, in this tutorial. You could think of a room as a map in RPG Maker. So the room is your map. It's where all the events go. And events are like uh, objects, and if you're relating it to, to RPG Maker. So uh, if you want to adjust your settings, you may see I have a different background and some things are different in, in yours. Click on File and go to Preferences, and you can go ahead and go through these and change the font colors and the font sizes and uh, you know snap to grid settings and all kinds of settings, you know, your background, uh, where your project path is defaults to, all of that is up to you to decide for your project. You don't really need to mess with it right now, but feel free to mess with that if you want to. So, we've got our new project created. What do we do? How do we start? So, I mentioned rooms earlier. Let's go ahead and right, actually we can double click on room. So we double click on room and you see that our workspace switched over to room, room zero and it opened up a new tab in our workspace here. So um, basically, we can tab back and forth in between that. Uh, this is our map. Now that we've got our map, we can hold down control and scroll out with the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. And we can also just, uh, without holding a control, we just middle mouse button, and we can move the map around. 
let's kind of change this map around a little bit. First off, I want to change the resolution. So let's go to the bottom left here where it says width and height. We're going to make it standard HD. So let's go ahead and do 1280 by 720. And you can see that it's updating uh, in real time right there. So I hit enter and it updated the size of the map. So if we were to run this, it would just show uh, you know, 1280 by 720 black screen. That's all it would really do. Um, so that's not very impressive. So let's not really run the game yet. But what we want to do is kind of uh, make a, t a tiles layer. Now we're going to basically, let's talk about layers for a second. So layers are something that's new in Game Maker Studio 2 that used to be just working off of depth in Game Maker Studio 1. Um, but now with layers, it's like a whole new ball game. Uh, you can have easy panoramic backgrounds and uh, we're going to get into that. But basically right now you can create uh, new layers by clicking on a button. So we have a background layer that's already created and we have an instances layer where you're going to put your objects. Let's go ahead and add a new layer just to get used to it. Let's click on our background because we want to put our tiles right above the background. So we're going to click on create a new tile layer. And that's our tile layer right above background. We could rename this tile layer by just double clicking here um, or you know single clicking and then single clicking again. Um, and kind of change it like that. Eventually you'll get it. And we'll call it uh, tile underscore uh, one. Whatever you want to call it, right? Um, so you could rename it like that. You can make it invisible by clicking on the eye right there. But we have nothing there, so that's that's uh, not affecting our game yet. Um, so we've got a blank map. What do we what do we do with it, right? Well, I kind of wanted to make it look like grass. So let's change the background uh, of our map. So we'll click on the background layer, and you'll see that this gave you some more options. You can set a sprite to the background, but what we're going to do is just set a color. So we're going to click on that black color and let's kind of find a nice green color. Let's click on green. I don't want a lime green though, so let's bring the saturation down. Let's bring that down a little bit. We'll kind of go with like a pale green. Boom. There we go. That's close enough to grass and we can move around and zoom in and zoom out. It's a solid color, so we don't really need to uh, pay attention to detail on that. Pick a color you like and we're going to stick with that. The next thing I want to do is set the frame rate of the room. So what we're going to do is go to um, room physics. Uh, we don't want to enable physics yet, actually. Um, we're going to set the frame rate somewhere. Animation speed, keep that the same. That's not the frame uh, of the game, actually. I think it's actually somewhere else to set the frame rate of the room. Right now it doesn't matter because we don't have anything animating, but you can actually uh, change the frame rate um, somewhere in here. We'll get back to it in a second. Um, let's create an, a player object real quick. I think that's a good thing to do. Um, so how do you create a player and how do you move around and stuff? Basically you're going to need a sprite and an object. So a sprite is just an image. So let's go up to where it says sprites, right click and create a new sprite and you'll see that it took you out of the room zero and put you into the workspace. Let's use a naming convention, SPR underscore player. Now you don't have to name it like this, it's completely arbitrary, you can name it whatever you want, but if we want to have multiple things with the same uh, attribution, like we want to say that the player is going to have uh, an object and a sprite, giving it SPR underscore lets us know when we're using, when we're typing code, that if we do SPR underscore player, we're talking about the image. And if we do OBJ underscore player, we're talking about the object. So I would recommend coming up with the naming convention. Uh, a pretty standard one is SPR for sprite, OBJ for object, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, so we're gonna go, uh, but one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna say just like player. And then because then when you create a, an object, you, they'll have a conflicting problem. They'll both be named player and you can't reference that in the code. So it has to be a different name. Um, so we're going to go SPR underscore player. Now we're going to talk about the size to change the size of, the, of what object. Uh, if we're going to make our own sprites, I recommend starting kind of small. So let's do 16 by 16 instead of 64. So let's go ahead and click on the resize sprite. Another box will pop up. Now what we're going to do, we can uncheck maintain aspect ratio if we want to do it like some like rectangle, you know, or... or some kind of weird polygon or something, we can do it like that. But what we're gonna do is maintain aspect ratio because we're just gonna do 16 by 16. So if I hit 16 and press enter, that's all I did, you see that it automatically changed the height of 16 because we had that checked. Um, so I, you just change that and it'll automatically change that. We change the size. 
There's many more things you could do in here. If this isn't already set to this by default, just click on this, uh, change from percent to pixels. We're not gonna use interpolation. So that's it. We've changed the size of the sprite to a 16 by 16. Whoa, it's a little tiny thing. We can't even see it, right? So remember that? Hold down control and scroll in with the middle mouse button. That lets us get a better, we could also just left click with the mouse, middle mouse button. Uh, I'm sorry, not left click, but we can click with the middle mouse button and uh, that'll let us drag it around. What is this little arrow thing? Well, that's the origin. That's like, where is the center of the sprite? So we can kind of decide where the center's at manually, or we can go and kind of click down this list and pick a spot for it. Uh, I want to say middle center, so we're going to do sprite, uh, location 8 by 8 and that's going to be the center of the sprite. And that's how we'll do that. Now all we have is a transparent box, that's not really an image, right? Correct, so let's add uh, an image. So right here we can basically create animations right inside the sprite editor. So I've got two frames, they're both blank, we don't really need two blank frames, so you can add frames like that. You can also remove frames by clicking the X right there. You can press, uh, left click it, control C and control V and copy and paste uh, frames as well. But we're gonna get one for now and double click it. So when you double click a, a frame, it's gonna bring up the image editor here, which is pretty cool. We can do the same techniques, hold down the control and middle mouse and scroll in and out and change it, move it around so we can get it to look how we want it So while we're editing. Let's do something very simple. We're gonna do what we call programmer art, which is basically boxes and, and circles and uh, dots and you know nothing fancy. So let's pick a color for the player. Let's say blue. Uh, actually, let's go green. No, we'll go blue since their background is green. We'll go blue and we'll select the box tool, the rectangle tool, and we'll just go ahead and left click the top left and scroll down to the bottom right. And there we go, we've got a full box. If you wanted, you could actually make a different uh, different colors too. We can go like double click on that color and change the colors around a little bit. And then you can kind of give it multiple colors. Double click, change this like that. And really do what you want, right? So we're, we're gonna leave it at that. But that could be our player for now. And it has some sort of a, it's just a box, right? But that's nothing fancy, right? We got a box. Let's turn this simple box into a cool looking animation or somewhat cool animation. Um, let's do one more thing though. Let's go ahead and select the circle tool and pick uh, a different blue color. Let's go ahead and go like this, like this, and hit okay. And we'll just go ahead and do a little circle right in the center, just like that. Now, we've got this, we're gonna do one more thing. Uh, we talked about layers on the map, right? We also have layers on our images, just like Photoshop or GIMP. So let's go ahead and go down here into the layers and add a new layer. Click new, add new layer. Now we're gonna select that layer because what we're gonna do is we're going to animate this image. But before we animate it, um, we're not gonna do it one frame at a time. We're not gonna cop, we're not gonna paste it and then change it up. We're gonna do it all at the same time. So what we do is we left click on that image, we press Control C to copy it. How many frames do we want? Let's say eight. So you can see how many frames you've got right here. Let's go Control V, do that till you have eight frames. That seems to be good enough. Now let's pick a different color. Let's say like maybe like a gray or something. And let's go ahead and click the little dot. And what we're gonna do is click on this little play pause uh, animation button. Now you can see when we hit that play button, it's cycling through. It doesn't look like it's animating because they're all the same. But if you select something like say this pencil tool, let's start at the center and kind of draw outwards. And we're gonna animate like little dots coming off of it. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but we'll find out, right? Or you know what, let's do like circles. We'll do like a little circle scheme. So we're gonna go ahead while it's animating, left click and just start moving around. There we go. So we've got like a little animation. Let's add another little bit of layer to that. Go ahead and change the color up a little bit. And we'll kind of keep that same rotation. Boom. So now we've got like a little bit of animation. Um, I wouldn't even know what I'm trying to do, right? We're making programmer art, but we're just illustrating how to do like a, an animation there. So once we're done with that, we don't have to hit save or anything. It's going to automatically save. And, you know, when we hit save the game, it'll save all that stuff. You see in the top right, it automatically did like a little save slider thing. We hit save, it took us to our room. To go back to the workspace, we just click on the workspace tab and we can see that animation where we're at. So we've got our uh, sprite. But that's not really an object we can move around, right? We need to create the object and assign this sprite to the object. 
So let's go over to our resources, right click on objects and create a new object. We're going to go OBJ underscore player. So we've got a sprite and an object, both named player, but we've kind of prefixed it with uh, a, a naming convention. In JavaScript, they, you use a lot of camel case, so it might be like OBJ, uh, OBJ and then capital P on player. Uh, but in, I don't know, let's just do an underscore player just because uh, I think it, it looks cleaner. Uh, I typically have a weird naming convention where I start like this, and then if I wanted to say, like, draw the player's hat, I would go player hat. So I would start with uh, the name of the, the type of thing, like the sound or the tile or the sprite or the object, underscore, and then everything else would be, be like JavaScript camel's case. Uh, player hate. Player hate. Player hat. Okay. Don't be a player hatter. All right. So let's go ahead and click on the three dots. Now what we're going to do uh, on this object we're going to assign this object a sprite. So now we're saying that this object is going to look like the, uh, the sprite animation we just created. Cool, so let's go ahead and how would we make this? We've got our object, right? Which we can also use the middle mouse and scroll around. We can hold down control and zoom in and out and move that all around so we've got a ton of workspace. And if so, for some reason you get lost and you don't know what happened to it, you can always double click on it and it'll zoom you back over to it. Same thing happens if you're zoomed out. If you double click on it, it'll zoom you back in. So it's a quick way. If you're like, oh, it's too big, just double click on it and it will zoom it one for one aspect ratio. Cool. So we've got an event thing here. We're going to come back to that. But let's add this object to the map, right? So let's go ahead and either double click on room or click on the room tab since we already have it open. We can move it around if we want to. But you can see it's switched to the room editor here for tiles, but we're not editing tiles right now, right? So just keep the room open and go to resources, no big deal. Now we have to decide what layer on the map do we want to add this object. Well, obviously the player's not going to be in the background, and the pl player's not going to be in the tile layer. Um, we're going to be uh, in the instance layer. And you can add as many layers as you want to have. So you can add like a path layer, you can add um, more asset layers, you can put different layers in different folders, you can move them around so you can have uh, the tiles behind the background. I don't know why you do that, but maybe you want to do that. Um, you can add multiple instance layers, multiple tile layers. This is something you'll probably will be doing, having multiple tile layers. So we'll go ahead and create two tile layers. We're going to say tile underscore two so that you can have like a bottom part of something and the top part of something or maybe you want to draw like a house with one tile set and you want to draw like doors and windows with a separate tile set you can add as many tile sets as you want well limited to if you're using the trial version you can, I think you can only have like two of them or five of them but anyway on the instance layer that's what we're going to add our player so we select our instance layer on the map we select our resources we go to objects we left click the object and we drag it and we put it wherever we want to put it you can also uh, hold alt and paste a bunch of them if you do something you don't want to do you can hold control and z and it'll undo it just like in word like every other game and and uh or every other editor you know control z you've got your control z for undo control c for copy control v for paste we can zoom in to look at it it's not really animating right it looks like one frame but even though we're in the editor we can animate it by clicking this little button right there so we can see what the game will look like if it was actually running you can see that our sprite is animating right there. Whereas when we zoom out, it still looks like it. Boom. So if we want to test play the game, we just save it and we hit play. We run it. You could also hit F5 to run it. It'll compile it. And there you have it. You've got your game. It's in uh, 1280 by 720. And you've got your player uh, right there in the center that's animating. Now, you can't really move it around because we haven't made any code for that yet. So all you really have to do is make uh, some modifications to the, the object itself. Right now it's an object that has a sprite and it has nothing else. So we have to add an event. And the event is like the, the time that you, the event decides what time you want things to happen. So let's add an event and we see we've got all of these options. Don't get overwhelmed. We're going to simply do the create event. And the create event is going to, it's basically going to um, happen when you when the, the object is created. So you can see that I've got something in here called image underscore x scale equals 4, image underscore y scale equals 4. And basically that is uh, changing the x and the y uh, 
the scale, uh, basically, of the sprite. So instead of 16 pixels, it's becoming a 64 by 64 pixels. So let's go ahead, now that we've got the create layer, image X scale, image Y scale, hit save and hit play. And we should see that the sprite is bigger than it was last time, and there it is. So we've got the same size of the screen, but the sprite is four times the size. Cool, but it still doesn't move around. So let's do something else. Now, we can't really put moving around in the create event, or we can, but we won't be able to control it. Because we need to be able to interact every frame. So we need to do a different event. We're going to add a new event, and we're going to do the step event. The step event is going to check every frame to see, uh, run this code every frame. So we first need to do a conditional statement to see, are we pressing something? So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, we're going to open up parentheses, and we're going to do our um, braces. And you don't actually... You don't actually need these in uh, JavaScript, or you don't actually need these in GML, but I keep them out of job, uh, habit of JavaScript. So um, what we're going to do is type in keyboard underscore check, and we need to do a, a little bit of code, ORD, and in parentheses, you put the letter that you want to check for, right? I want to check for four different things. I want to do... Uh, uh, let's do WASDA. W for up, uh, A for left, S for down, and D for right. So let's do W. We'll do up. And then we need to close it out just like that. And we have three opening ones. One, two, three. And we'll close it with one, two, three. So we're saying, are we pressing W? If we are pressing W, what do we want to happen? So we'll put that right here. And you don't really need to indent, but it looks nicer if you do indent. So... We're going to say, let's see, uh, we can go X. So pressing W, let's talk about uh, X and Y. So X is for left to right, your X, you know, your uh, your horizontal pane. And then your vertical axis is uh, is basically your Y, right? So X and Y, if you ever took geometry, you would know what we're talking about here. But it is a little bit different. If you want to go up in uh in, in game maker studio 2 and also in R rpg maker you subtract from the y so it's opposite from your geometry class so if we press w we want to go up right so instead of going by instead of adding to the y we need to subtract from the y so we're going to go y minus equals however many pixels we want to move every frame let's say two um well let's say three and we'll do an inline so if we're pressing up then make our y reduce by three every frame so if we're holding y we're going to just keep moving up we're going to do the same thing we can just copy that and paste that now we're going to say if we're pressing s now we're going to do the opposite right we want to go down if we're pressing s so we need to add to the y so we're going to do plus equals three we're going to copy that paste that and we say if we're pressing a we're going to change our x-axis this time and A is going to go to the left, so we're going to subtract from that X. So we're going to go minus equals 3. We'll copy-paste this. And we're going to say plus equals 3 for when we're pressing D. Uh, these have to be capital. Um, and you In Game Maker Studio 1, you could use single quotations. But in Game Maker Studio 2, it specifically asks for double quotes. Right, so... Um, I think that that looks right. Let's go ahead and save the game. And now every step of the game, it's going to check if we're pressing these buttons. And if it is, it's going to do what's in there. We're going to change our X and our Y by that amount. So we've saved it. Let's test play. And now <clears throat> our sprite should be able to move around. And if I press W, we go up. If I press A, we go left. If I press S, we go down. If I press D, we go right. And that's pretty, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Very simple, like jumping into how to get started, right? There's a whole lot of, a whole lot to learn in Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, I would recommend, before I let you go, uh, something that's really cool is press F1, and you're going to load up your... Uh, go ahead and allow access to it, because it's basically linking to a file that's already on your computer. And it's basically a huge uh, help file. So if we were... Remember we were doing keyboard, right? Keyboard underscore check. You can hit that and then search keyboard check and you can see more information on check press, check release, uh, how to use the virtual keyboard and it's it's basically a huge help file so um, do a little bit of uh, 
snooping around the help file. In Game Maker Studio 1, it was a lot bigger than in Game Maker Studio 2, but still, it's huge, guys. It's bigger than, like, I wish RPG Maker MV had sort of help file that Game Maker Studio does. Um, honestly, in, in Game Maker Studio, uh, the help file is better than all others that I've seen. But yeah, um, we've got started, right? We made a room, we added a new layer. Um, for later on, we'll do tiles. We changed the resolution of the game. We created a sprite, we created an object, we made that object bigger, and we gave the player the, op the ability to move around with that, that object. So that's the start. I want you guys to create that in your, your game, and I'm sure a lot of you already know all of this stuff, but this is just to get people started, right? So for these very beginner, I want to start at the very bottom, and we're going to keep working our way up so that we can, we can all kind of catch up to a certain level and then basically do the tips and tricks later on. This video went on a little bit longer because it was the first one. Hopefully the next one I can cut down to half the size, half the time. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know you want to see more of them. I'm going to do them anyway, but still I'll get more enthused and, and hyped for doing them. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. I have lots of RPG Maker content. I'm planning to do lots of uh, Game Maker Studio 2 uh, on. We're still doing both, right? So don't think we're moving in one direction or the other. We're going to keep both going, but I need to pump out a lot of GM, uh, GMS 2 tutorials because I already have hundreds of RPG Maker tutorials. So um, expect a lot of GMS 2 stuff in the future. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.